exciting occasion that brings us together. Matt and Juliana will be joined together in holy bonds of marriage. They're so grateful to all the friends and the family who have come today. Let's pray um, and ask God to bless us over this ceremony. Father, we know you're in this place and we just so enjoy your presence. Father, we ask that you would surround Matt and Juliana as they enter into this covenant relationship. Father, we thank you for marriage. We give you the honor and the glory for creating this sacred union. We believe that by your sovereign grace that you have brought Matt and Juliana together. Father, please prepare them for oneness. Father, we also ask that you bless this couple in their new home. Anoint them. Father, use them in a mighty way in your kingdom. Guard their bodies, their souls, and their minds. Give them a powerful prayer life together. Shape their relationship into total oneness. Father, teach them to depend on you for their security and their significance. And Father, then they can serve each other out of your bounty. Father, we dedicate this to you, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Who gives this woman in marriage? Her mother and I. Great. You may be seated. And Sandy, I'm going to ask you and, and, and Margaret to stay standing. I'm going to ask the parents something for a, a parental commitment. As Matt and Juliana begin their home today, your families are going to be enriched and they're going to be enlarged. Mike and Sandy, y'all are getting a son by love. And Margaret and Tom, y'all are getting a daughter by love. So with this, you've nurtured these two for, I guess, about 30 years or something, something like that. And so would you bestow your full blessing today on this union and their family? Amen. Thank you all very much for that. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Romans 12, 9 through 12. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 17, 22. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Thank you all for that scripture reading. All right, y'all can turn, turn toward me. All right, Matt and Juliana, it is an honor for me to participate in this sacred ceremony with y'all. I've had the experience and the blessing of watching y'all over the last four months um, and do your marriage counseling. And it's been a true blessing that has led to this day. I can say with confidence that both of you are ready to make this holy commitment. And I know that your marriage will be such a blessing to your friends, your family, your future kids, um, and the kingdom of God. Marriage was God's idea. And done his way, it's one of the greatest gifts this side of heaven. I love what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 4. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So Matt, I first met you around my fire pit 
I think about four months ago. And I was excited to see uh, what Laura Catherine called the Southern lawyer uh, <laughs> and to meet you. And you showed up, and from the first second I met you, I liked you. And that's not always the way it's been. I've met some, some other of Juliana's bows, and the first time I didn't, I didn't like them that much. But um, <laughs> I liked you a lot. The first thing I saw was your easygoing nature, and that's a blessing. And then the way you listened, you listened so well to Juliana. You also had a concern for others, and you loved the Lord. The first time we were around that fire pit, we talked about that. But my respect for you over those next six sessions, and they weren't easy. You know, they were, they were hard. Ask y'all some tough questions. Got me even um, to respect you more. And one of the things I so appreciated is the relationship you've had with your mom and dad. And I've told both of you, I told you, Juliana, that would be one of your greatest gifts, that your husband is not carrying some father wound. He got the blessing from Tom and from Margaret. And I told you this, Matt, one of your greatest blessings is the relationship that Juliana had with Dr. Vaughn and her mother. That will bless you all the days of your life. That's not a threat, my brother. That is a real blessing. But you are a man of character and integrity, and we need more men like that. I've witnessed your servant's heart and how you have really reflected on how best to serve Juliana. And she's been open about what her needs are. And you've been open about what your needs are. And um, it's involved a little sacrifice. You know, there's some sacrifices that both of y'all are making. Um, and you're a giver. You're not a taker. Uh, that's been very evident. And I've also seen you under some pressure. Like my papa said, until you see a man under pressure, you don't really know him. You've had a lot of changes going on. I mean, these last four months, y'all both had a lot of changes. And you've maintained your composure, your integrity, um, you're proven and you're real. So it's evident that you love Juliana deeply and the way you respect and serve her. So I admonish you to continue to love her as Christ loved the church and he, and he gave himself for it. You will do well as her husband and you're blessed for him to be your groom and your husband. Solomon said in Proverbs 18, 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and has favor with the Lord. Now, Julianne, I first met you about 16 years ago. Uh, we moved in next to the Vaughns. The Vaughns, I think they'd been in their house about six months, maybe. And I think you were a sophomore in high school. I'd met your dad three days earlier. Dr. Vaughn came over to my house. I thought he was the pine straw man because he had on shorts and uh, very, very short, 1980 shorts, no shirt, it was pouring down rain, and he had uh, LCV and John David in their diapers with no shirt or anything. And uh, he asked if I wanted to play in the, in the rain. And, of course, I did. So uh, we became fast friends. But I met you a few days later, and Sandy was so proud of you. I remember in your driveway, I remember where, where we were, Jamie and I, my wife, were, were immediately impressed by your vibrancy, your zest. Of course, you're beautiful on the outside and the inside. And your heart seeks the truth of the Lord. The older you've gotten, the more we've watched how you love the Lord. That is a real blessing. <clears throat> you're strong and you're talented, very, very talented, um, and you have character. And I've been blessed to get to know you over the years, just watching you and seeing you in, in Alabama when you came home, uh, conversations in your front yard, uh, conversations about dating and, and men and a lot, of, a lot of other things. It's just been wonderful. Playing catchphrase. A couple of times you came to Jason's for the Vaughn Torrance Sunday night dinner. It was great to know you. But I think I most know you through your little sister and your, I hate to say little brother, because he's not little, uh, John David. Because I have spent my thousands of hours with LCV and John David. John David's my only son. LCV, we call her our fourth daughter. They love you. You have always affirmed them. You bless them. And uh, you've, you've really been a gift for them. And so thank you for that. Now, I do have some stories, but I'm not going to say it because John David cracked me up one time and he was telling me about when you hit the school bus uh, in our neighborhood. <laughs> Sorry about that. And he said, Mr. Zane, I think he was about eight. I just don't understand. She says she didn't see it, but how don't you see a school bus? But that was just one of the things. They love you. Um, and I remember where it was too because I, I, I saw it. But anyway, that's okay. That's okay. We have insurance. Um, so Juliana, you, your, your rivers run deep. You live life to the full and that's a blessing. And that's going to be fun fun for you. Um, you love and serve Christ. You're cheerful and that's contagious. I love that about you. But most of all, you're a lover of God and his truth. 
And I have seen that. I've been so blessed. I told Jamie, as you're planning your wedding, one of your major concerns was that the gospel be preached and Christ get the glory. So he smiled on Matt. God smiled on you the day you met Juliana. Y'all are going to do well. So get to admonish you a little bit. Um, I so appreciate the way you both have embraced biblical marriage. Because in our culture, there's sometimes a low, casual, take it or leave it view. And uh, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit is going to go with you. And he's going to continue to be with you as you commit your marriage to God. In Hebrews 13, 4, the Hebrew writer said, let marriage be held in honor above all. The word, the Greek word for that is precious. And I want to encourage y'all today to hold this marriage all the days of your life as something that's deeply precious. There's three key spiritual realities of marriage that I want to hit on. I'm going to do it fast. I promise you it'd be fast. First of all, remember the first foundation of marriage, that the glory of God is the ultimate aim of your union. Marriage exists for God more than it exists for us. God is highly vested in this marriage to his glory. Therefore, he's given you all the resources of heaven to make this union a profound blessing and to display the glory for him. Second thing, that's a spiritual reality. The grace of God is the ultimate hope of marriage. The major problem with marriages throughout history is sin. Something bad happened in the Garden of Eden. And sin is the great separator, and it's the great destroyer of relationships. And Matt, it's going to be hard to believe. I think we've talked about this in some, so maybe not. But Juliana, this beautiful, God-fearing lady, will show you your sin more than any other person ever has. Any of us that are married in here can attest to this. Juliana, Matt, this man of God that has character, will reveal your sin more than any other person in your life. And if you're normal, like we all know we are, you probably already experienced some of that. Um, any of us that are married here today can attest to this truth. You'll have the opportunity to forgive each other a lot in this marriage. And I want to encourage you to do that. <clears throat> forgive freely. Demonstrate, demonstrate the grace of our Lord, the grace that he showed us on the cross to each other. And let the gospel of grace permeate your marriage so the world can see the gospel that Christ extended to us. And the last thing, the foundation of marriage, is a spiritual truth is the gospel of Christ is the ultimate picture of marriage. God created marriage to be the living drama that shows how Christ feels about the church. Marriage is a display. It's an illustration, the Christian marriage, used by God to demonstrate the covenant-keeping love between Christ and his people. So there's that, that no other event or institution does. So God basically has said all through scripture, if you want to know how my son Jesus loves his bride, which is the church, or the children of Israel before the church in the New Testament, look at Christian marriage. That's his illustration. It's like the Lord's Supper is the illustration physically of the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord. This is the demonstration of Christ and his church. So Juliana, you'll give a picture to a lost world of how the church views Christ. Matt, you'll give a picture to a lost world of how Christ views his bride. This is both challenging, but it's also encouraging. So Juliana, as you respect Matt, you'll show the world that the church respects Christ. And Matt, as you sacrificially love and give yourself to Juliana, you're showing the world how Christ loves, him, loves his church and gave himself fully to it. So, a giant thread runs all the way through this holy book from Genesis to Revelations, saying, comparing God's relationship with his people and the human institution of marriage. And that's what we're doing today. So, with that biblical backdrop, I want to charge y'all <clears throat> some things we've already talked about in front of your friends, your family, all these witnesses. I mean, these are your closest friends, people that love you. Always remember that your marriage affects God's reputation. This is his. Second thing, you've heard this before, pray together daily. 
Prayer will keep your marriage centered on Christ, the hope of glory. And I'm a data guy. And God, and God we trust, all others bring data. We talked about this. One in 1,200 couples that say they pray together every day end up separating. One in two couples that don't pray together every day end up separating. I'm going to put that on you, Matt, like we did in counseling. You lead spiritually. And you pray for your bride and your family and your kids every day. Third thing, Christ is enough for your marriage. I recommend good resources. We have so many good resources in the church today on marriage. But Christ is enough. When you hit a bump, and you will, run to Christ. Pray. Get on your face. Pray with each other. And he'll protect you. And the last thing, obey God's word in how you love each other. I know you both believe this is the inspired word of God. And it's very interesting. The Bible really teaches, Matt, you only have to do four things for Juliana. You only have to do one. Men are very simple. You women, there's four things the Bible says. You've got to sacrificially love her. You've got to show her affection, tenderness, and protection. That's, that's your job. And Juliana, you know the one thing Matt needs that we talk over and over about. He needs your respect. That's all the scripture says. If he has your respect, he'll, he'll do fine. So, Matt, remember... Juliana is God's precious daughter, and he wants her to be loved and cared for and protected. Juliana, remember, Matt's God's warrior. He wants him to be encouraged and respected. That's God's word to y'all. So Matt and Juliana, again, I'm so confident that God's going to do a mighty work in y'all, in your home, in your marriage, and in the kingdom. So now we're going to exchange the marriage vows. We'll do the, do the rings in, in a second. So would y'all please join both hands and look at each other. This is great. Matt, do you take Juliana to be your lawfully and scripturally wedded wife? And do you solemnly promise before God and these witnesses that you will love, honor, and cherish her? And that forsaking all others for her alone, you will perform all the duties that a man owes to his wife until God by death shall separate you. Yes. Amen. Juliana, do you take Matt to be your lawfully and scripturally wedded husband? And do you solemnly promise before God and all these witnesses that you will love, honor, and cherish him, and that forsaking all others for him alone, you will perform all the duties that a wife owes to her husband until God by death shall separate you? I do. Amen. Okay, Tom, you've got those rings, and we're going to talk about those a second, and then y'all, y'all just get them from Tom when I, when I, when I get to that point. Um, You've chosen rings, which is great. And the ring on the proper finger of the, right, of the hand is a symbol in our culture. It says to you, Matt, and to everybody, I belong to Juliana. It says to you, I belong to Matt. It's a sign to the world that I'm already taken. I'm the property of my beloved. Your ring is a circle, has no end. So that's a beautiful reminder of the unending commitment and love y'all have to each other. So I am going to encourage you to wear your ring. We had a conversation about that back, back there with the groomsmen. Um, wear your ring and wear it uh, continuously. Wear it with gratitude. Enjoy it with genuine love, with commitment, because your ring is a reminder every time you look at this that there's one person who has chosen you above everybody else. Y'all had a lot of choices, and y'all chose each other. And they love you exclusively and sincerely and sacrificially. That's a good thing. So... Matt, I'm going to ask you to place the ring on Juliana's finger. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay, and re- repeat after me on this one, okay? This ring I give thee in token and pledge. This ring I give thee in token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And with all my earthly goods, I thee endow. And with all my earthly goods, I thee endow. Amen. Okay, Juliana, get the ring from your father-in-law. Place it on Matt's ring finger. Okay. (laughs) Repeat after me. (laughs) This ring I give thee in token and pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. And our constant faith and abiding love. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. <laughs> so that's it. 
And with all my earthly goods, I thee endow. With all my earthly goods, I thee thee endow. That's good. That's good. Amen. All right, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. Inasmuch as Matt and Juliana have agreed in the bonds of marriage and have signified the same by the joining of the hands, by the exchanging of vows, and by the exchanging of these rings, by the authority vested in me by the state of Alabama as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is my privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. And what therefore God has joined together, let not man put us under. Matt, you may kiss your bride. I'm pleased to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Thomas West.